Bob the Stadium. Acknowledge me. Hello everyone and welcome to Kids Scoops. I'm your host Cooper, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumours and results. And uh, let's just say tonight's episode is going to be a very, very interesting one, I it's fair to say the least. Um, now, I've got some statistics for you all. This of Kick It Scoops. Now, this is not including interviews. This is not including Gold King Challenges. This is not including the A4W podcast. This is not including any of those other videos I've done. But of pure Kick It to Scoops episodes only, from episode one in person to right now, this is episode 97 of Kick It to Scoop. So in not the next week, but not the week after, but the week after that will be the 100th episode of Kick It to Scoop's videos alone, which is 100 days worth of Kick It to Scoop's. And let's just say the planning has well and truly begun for Kick It to Scoop's episode 100 in three episodes or so's time. Now, I'm going to try and make that episode as big as as possible which means people on the show maybe people might throw in some special shout outs um that episode will be a big one i may go through i'm not confirmed what i'm gonna exactly go through on that episode obviously we do the usual stuff but maybe i might do the best of maybe i might go through some of my highlights if you get the scoops maybe i'll go through some highlights of the channel overall um i'll go through some highlights and some uh yeah some topics that I'll bring up on that episode. I might let you know the week prior. I might let you in the lead up to episode 100 in between episode 99 and 100. I'm going to figure all that out and have been planning some stuff. So let's hope we can make it a big one. And something else you could all do, please subscribe if you haven't already. You want to aim for 3,000 subscribers by the end of the season. And if so, we'll do some prize giveaways at that point. What that will be, you'll have to find out once we hit 3K. It's been a long road to get to 3K here. I thought it could have been a bit quicker than it has been, but please subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button on this video. We want to aim for 20 likes for this video. It's free. I don't make you pay to subscribe and listen and watch videos of mine. But in saying that, if you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. You want me to roast a friend with some my birthday? Anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. I love doing them videos. And you know what? It's not because of the money. It's because I love the interaction. Some of the banter some people give, like, for example, someone will say that they go for a certain team um, and they want me to roast them about going for that team or something about some individual's terrible football career or they want some advice on some things, uh, some interesting things, let's just say, uh, that they request. Um, but, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I love doing them videos. And it brightens up a lot of people's days, which I'm really honoured to hear that. Um, so people say how much they love the video. You know, all the people that's request a video say they really enjoy it by either leaving a review or messaging me saying how much they loved it. And I really do appreciate seeing those messages. And it shows that the money is well worth it. So cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. All righty. And also follow my Instagram page. We're almost, as of right now, like maybe seven or so subscribers away from 4,000. That is phenomenal. So if you're not subscribed on there, please go do so. AFL Info Live on Instagram. On Facebook, we're well over 55,000 followers on there. It's on YouTube here. We want to get 3K by the end of the footy season, ideally, um, or the end of the year. But honestly, if you're watching this, thank you. But please subscribe if you're not. There's over a percentage of you that aren't subscribed. You're well over... Of the people that are watching this, it's over 60% of people that aren't subscribed. So please go subscribe if you haven't already. It costs absolutely nothing. and I'm not going to charge you to subscribe and watch my content. Now, what are we going to talk about on the show today? We got, well, we got the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. We've got a few things to bang on about. Uh, we're going to get through my fantastic Supercoach score. I'm going to review the rounds that's going and upcoming. I don't really want to talk about the St Kilda game, but... We're going to have to do so. So, you know, I'll go through every game as per normal. Not that I really want to go over the Saints game, as I said, but here we are. All righty. And I also got my team of the week, which 
it's going to be a good one this week. Or well, every week's good, but this one's going to be really good. I don't think none of you can dispute. Well, really, any week, I don't feel like you can dispute any of my team of the weeks. And this one in particular, I, I don't see how you could debate this because you'd have to mount a very hard case to try and do so. But before all that and everything else, please welcome the world famous segment. And oh, it's world famous. The world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. Oh, boy. What am I going to bang on about today? Is it about the umpiring scoops? Uh, you bet your bottom dollar, like top dollar, they're going to get mentioned again. Okay. In particular, there's two games I want to bring them up in. Okay. Two games. We'll start with the Saints one. Now, the umpiring throughout the game, I thought, you know, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't terrible to the point of where you're going to be pissed off about it and, you know, like rant about it. But there's one incident I want to bring up. And, and yes, it is the last play between Max King and Sam Frost, I think it was. So, okay. Yeah, before people start saying King should have marked that, three on one, Lockie is all the time triple teamed. To get any play to get triple teamed all the time, it's very hard. Max King, I thought, had a decent game, especially over, over some other games this year. You know, he's carried some injuries, been suspended, hasn't had a good run at it so far. And I thought this game was a start of the right set for King. He kicked two goals, two. A, he was a bit more physical. This game was great set for King. Big fan of his, and he knows that. Um, you know, I just think the, the hatred towards him has got to stop. It's ridiculous. And um, he shut up some of those haters this week. So I don't King. But in terms of the last incident, was it a mark to King? I thought he controlled it, and then it came out. So... That's not the part I'm debating. The part I'm going to debate was whether it was chopping the arms or whatever you call it. I think it was. Now, was it 1,000% one? Uh, I think it was. Now, now it might have seemed soft, but Sam Frost's hand didn't start by chopping the arms, but the, when Sam's hands came down, it was on King's shoulders. You can see it in the clip. And he pulls it down a little bit. Now, you know, it wasn't one where it was, like, so rigged. But you've seen some of these you paid before. Throughout the games, of any games, you'll see them paid. Why did they not pay it here? Now, you, 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 you can bring up, oh, you should have won at Hawthorne, yada, yada, yada. That's got nothing to do with this single incident, okay? This has got something to do with Kingy, Frost, and the umpire, no one else. So, albeit you may say soft, it was there. Now, they pay some of these, they don't pay some of these. The AFL umpires can't be inconsistent. And another thing they're inconsistent about, what's new? You either pay these all, or you pay none. You pay zilch, or you pay them all. You can't pick and choose which one of these you pay and which ones of these you don't. You don't start going, oh, it's the end of the game now. We can't pay this. But you'll pay them in the first call in the first 10 minutes. No. I think Max King should have got a free kick here. Now, you, and the reason I'm not saying it robbed us of the game, it, an opportunity it did to a degree, because how? who are you to say that he wasn't going to get it? He would have been about 45 metres out, 50 out. On the boundary. A hard shot, no question about it. But you have no idea how it could have turned out. He could have shanked it. He could have flushed it. He could have hit the post. You don't know. We won't know because he wasn't given the opportunity to get it to win us the game. Now, Hawthorne played better throughout the game, but that's irrelevant again to this moment in the game. He was screwed of an opportunity to kick. The winner. Just remember that. You know what was worse than that? Or on par with that? It was also in the Melbourne game. Now, people can, again, another stupid comparison bring up to this game, like they would for the St Kilda one, is, oh, Melbourne, maybe if Melbourne didn't come up with a five-goal lead in the first quarter, you wouldn't be bringing this up. Well, number one, I would be bringing this up. Thank you very much. 
So it shows another inconsistency with the AFL. And then you got, you know, people saying that, and then the people say, oh, no, rubbish, blah, blah. It wasn't a dangerous tackle on Brody Kemp. He threw his own head into the ground to make it look worse than what it was. And quite frankly, Van Royen, I'm pretty certain, was the guy that tackled Kemp. Perfect tackle. If it wasn't holding the ball, it was play on. And then someone socketed it out to pick it or pick it, socket it to someone in the goal which I think it was Fritsch. I'm not sure who it was, but it doesn't matter. It was still a Melbourne player. They kicked it. They took the advantage straight away because either it was play on or it was a free to Melbourne. So that's called advantage. Um, learn the rule book if you don't know what that means. And then, you know, play on the goals through the Melbourne player, kicked the goal. They lost by a point. Melbourne were robbed. They were. Now, this is not robbed of an opportunity to win the game. They were robbed of this game. Now, people keep telling me, oh, you yeah, Scoops, you only bring up the umpires about security games. Well, I probably brought up the umpires more about non security games than I have security games. So that just ruins your stupid vendetta or agenda saying that I only bring up umpires and say teams are robbed when security is involved. Bullshit. Just brought it up again with Melbourne. I brought it up with Freo against Carlton. I brought it up with Adelaide against Essendon. All those games have nothing to do with St Kilda. So, yeah, I said it in the Geelong Saints game. And, yeah, I said it about that King one just then. I don't bring it up every game. I might say the umpires are shit every game, but I don't say that they robbed us every game, which some of you clowns interpretate that I do because I don't. That's not an insult. That's just a fact of life. Yeah. Acknowledge me. The one. Now. Melbourne were robbed, plain and simple. Now, another one I'm going to bring up, which is almost identical to the Jacob Van Royen thing, was Geelong. Um, and it's my next topic about the Jeremy Cameron concussion thing. And I'm going to bring up the incident um, involving Cameron with the concussion, but prior, or was that technically after that, but I want to bring this up first. So, Jai Clark took the advantage. That wasn't an advantage. Geelong fans are saying that screwed them the game because Cameron kicked the goal from it and then was told to come back. I'm sorry, Geelong fans. You weren't robbed. You weren't robbed. Plain and simple. You weren't robbed. Because Jai Clark, number one, these are two points to this. Number one, Jai Clark kicked the ball about two seconds or so after the whistle blew. Um, so that's not advantage. Okay, and number two, let's say it was an advantage and they paid it an advantage. I mean, and not that they paid it, like, let's say they should have given it. Who got the goal from the so-called non-advantage advantage from Jai Clark's kick? Jeremy Cameron. Who, yes, he kicked the goal, but he shouldn't have been on the field to be able to kick that goal. So then you're throwing hypotheticals up here to say, who would have kicked it? Who would have, would anyone have been there? Would have. Poor player with Butters or Rosie, or not Rosie because it wasn't playing, was Horn Francis. It could have been there in the hole. You don't know. Maybe Cameron's opponent, who probably was a Lear a Lear or someone like that, maybe were in that position blocking the kick that Cameron grabbed. You just don't know. And Cameron should have been off the field, which is my next and final point for Scoop Trips being here tonight. Um, now, Jeremy Cameron, my first opinion of this was, you know, Cameron did the test on the field. You assumed he passed it because the doctor let him stay on. You're like, okay, he's passed it. But I didn't – I thought you were allowed to do that. And I swear there's other teams that have done it this like that this year. So I was given a bit of leniency towards the Geelong Football Club for this. But then later did I find out that you actually do have to go off. You can't stay on if you get smashed in the head into the ground. You have to go off, and then once you go off, even if you pass it, I'm pretty certain that you have to wait 15 to 20 minutes. And did he wait 15 to 20 minutes? No, he did not. So they cheated. And, of course, the AFL justified this ridiculous thing from Geelong. So, you know, I think it's atrocious, to be honest, from Geelong. Geelong, this is, again, all right, I want to stress enough that people that keep telling me that I've got it for Geelong um, and that the AFL aren't biased towards Geelong. The AFL 
favour Geelong all the time in free kick counts, in umpiring, in fixturing, in getting in trouble. Chris Scott can say whatever the hell he wants about clubs, about the umpires or the AFL in his press conferences. Right or wrong, he gets it. He says it. Free pass. No in trouble. No fine for him. No warning. No please explain. You know, Tom Hawkins on the phone during the lighting delay. Again, I don't personally think there's nothing wrong with that, but that's in the rules that you can't do that. They did that. They got a warning. Like, this just this year. Forget about the previous years with Duckwood Duck in his whole career and getting away with it, and now Ginevan does it, and he gets ridiculed and doesn't get freeze for the same thing that Selwood did his entire career. It's it's just recent examples. I could, If I really wanted to pinpoint more, I could. Dangerfield getting protected. <laughs> it's, it's just so much I could say. And you can't dispute any of that because that's all factually correct. Now, so what – this one, right, okay? Why did the AFL approve this when it was wrong what they did? Last time I checked, Port Adelaide – got fined last year heavily and heavily scrutinised for doing this with Aaliyah Aaliyah. They let him on. Geelong let Cameron on. What the hell is the difference? Nothing. Zilch. Zero difference. Now, I'm going to read you Geelong's statement about Jeremy Cameron, and then I'm going to read you the AFL's one, word for word. I'm not changing words to my opinion. This is the AFL and Geelong's statements. We'll start with Geelong. Geelong Cats forward Jeremy Cameron has entered the AFL concussion protocols. In the fourth quarter of Friday night's game, Cameron made head slash ground impact after, mark, after a marking contest. As per the AFL's concussion guidelines, Geelong medical staff immediately attended Cameron and conducted a HIA on ground. Yes, they did. Where he reported no symptoms and satisfied all AFL requirements. Interesting. After further review of the video footage and in consultation with his spotters in the ARC, it was decided there was no criteria to remove Cameron immediately from the field for further assessment. Before I continue, since when are you getting the ARC to justify your reasons? They can't even do the freaking goal reviews properly, let alone you using them for this as well. Very interesting there. That's a whole other argument. Um, but say... So he did the test, conducted the, the test on the ground where he reported no symptoms. I thought you had to go off for that. It's not like it was a body bump. This was a head smashing into the ground, especially the second one of Cameron. Apparently it happened early in the game too. But I do remember the second one very well in the last quarter. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, as further due diligence and still with no concussion symptoms, Cameron undertook and a normal SCAT 6 concussion assessment after the game. As is the process following a match, Cameron was monitored and assessed again on Saturday morning where he reported some concussive symptoms on repeat, SCAT 6, and a diagnosis of delayed concussion was made. Cameron will miss Thursday night's clash against Gold Coast. It will be continued to be monitored through the protocols. Now, there's a bit of porcupine has been told here, I think, because the AFL statement's worse. Geelong's is, you know, what it is, and I think the AFL's is ludicrous. Um, and hypocritical, which shows more Geelong favouritism and bias towards them. Um, Geelong can say what they said, but Cameron didn't go off the ground. I thought you had to go off for 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do the test. Passed or not, you have to wait 20 minutes. He clearly didn't because he stayed on. He didn't even go off. So, you know, interesting. Now, this is what the AFL said. The AFL said this, and I quote, AFL medical personnel have reviewed the management of Jeremy Cameron's head slash ground impact in the last quarter of the match last night and have discussed with the matter the matter with Geelong doctors, Geelong's doctors earlier this morning and are comfortable that he was managed consistent with the AFL concussion guidelines. Before I continue, um, comfortable that he was managed cons consistent with the AFL concussion guidelines. So how come there's other examples where players have to get assessed on the bench and they have to wait the 20 minutes and they have to do the test on, on the bench? Cameron didn't do it on the bench. Consistent, my ass. Following the impact, this is continuing the AFL statement, following the impact, Geelong's doctor conducted a HIA on ground, including video review and clinical assessment of the player. 
No, he didn't review the footage on the field. They don't take a freaking camera out there or the footage thing on the laptop or whatever. They looked at the footage maybe before he came on. I don't know. That's not what this says. On the ground, it says, on ground, which included video and clinical assessment of the player, which did not identify any immediate need to remove the player from the field for a scat six. However, now, sorry, before I continue, on the field, which did not identify any immediate need to remove the player from the ground for a scat six. He smashed his head on the ground face first. That's a freaking red flag right there to go take him off to see if he's okay. Continue the AFL's ridiculous statement. They say, however, they continue to monitor the play for the remainder of the match and conducted a scat six after the match, which did not which did not identify any signs of concussion. Regardless, should have been off for 20 minutes. They continue. Please also note that the medical spotters in the arc alerted the Geelong doctors to Cameron's head slash ground impact shortly after the incident. However, in absence of after the incident, before I continue. So the Geelong doctors didn't see it, but we saw it as fans on TV. The commentators on Channel 7 saw it, but Geelong didn't. The arc to tell them, give me a break, they didn't see it. I mean, wasn't that also on the side where the interchange is? That that happened? And even if it's not, that's irrelevant. We saw it, fans saw it. Fans of the ground would have seen it. Everyone that can, you know, open, people that were looking can see it. Continuing on the AFL statement, however, in absence of probable motor in coordination or no protective action, immediate removal as a player for a scat was not mandated. I don't, I don't know what the hell that's meant to mean. And to con in conclusion, as is standard protocol in such a situation, Geelong's doctors continue to monitor the player today for any delayed symptoms which have now been identified on repeat assessment, including a scat six. That was referring to Saturday. The AFL continue to show bias and favoritism towards the Geelong Football Club. Scott can say what he likes. No warning. I mean, not even a warning. No bloody fine. Nothing. Hawkins can use the phone. Nothing. Um, just a warning. And they get favoured fixtures. They don't bitch about that. They get favoured with the umpires. Nothing. Players get favoured the entire career. Joel Duckwood was the same. Nothing. And now this. Unbelievable. Try and justify you Geelong fans and people that say that I intentionally do this to piss Geelong off. Tell me where I'm telling lies. You know what? Tell me where I'm telling lies. Because there's no lies. Just straight facts. And that's not an insult. That's just a fact of life. Yeah. Now, all right, hope you guys and girls enjoyed that long edition of the world-famous segment, Script Show's Bang. All righty, it's a time for my round nine AFL team of the week. <laughs> From the back line, the pockets, Zach Vischer and Alex Witherden pull back. Sam Collins. Our back line, the flank is Riley Bonner. And Carl Amon. Centre half back, Callum Wilkie. Wingers, Caleb Sarong and James Harm. Centerman, Ed Richards. Our four line, the flank is Christian Petrarca. And Carl Langford. Centre half forward, Aaron Norton. Forward pockets, Willie Rioli and Isaac Rankin. And full forward, Darcy Fogarty. Ruckman, Rowan Marshall. Rovers, Ollie Wines and Adam. Trelaw interchange. Josh, 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 battle. Zach Butters, Callum Archie, Patrick Cripps, and Will Hayward. Emergency Sam Darcy, Sam Walsh, Jason Horn Francis, 
Nick Blakey, Tom Green, Bailey Dale, Nick Dacos, Jack Payne, and Finlay McRae. Now, reasons for these selections, let's put it up on the screen here. So, you know, Zach Fisher, despite his team being absolutely embarrassing, he wasn't very good. 30-odd disposals off the halfback line. Decent efficiency. was around 90%. Uh, a lot of metres gained. Zach Fisher in those humid, hot conditions in Darwin, uh, he played really well. Sam Collins in the same conditions. Dominated like 11 one percenters in uh, intercept possessions with the lock. 16-odd disposal for a key defender. Uh, his opposition did nothing, absolutely nothing. Alex Witherden, another player that was in the losing side, uh, but it was hard to refuse. 31 disposals for the, from the Eagles. You know, 11 intercept disposals, uh, a lot of one percenters here, and really good drive and run off halfback. So, to spot Riley Bonnet from my Saints, 30 disposals, 91% efficiency, elite ball use, a couple of goal assists, like six goal involvements. Riley Bonner continued to have another good game um, and deserved his spot the team of the week, um, being a great pickup for the Saints as a delisted free agent. Uh, Carl Amon from the Hawks. Uh, that's probably Hawthorne's best player against the Saints. He's good run off halfback um, and playing through the wing a little bit. His ball use is terrific, which is another reason why I wanted him at the time. Um, and he deserves to be on the team. Cal Wilkie, what can I, what can I say? About a two time All Australian who should be a three time coming at the end of the year. 21 disposals, like 11 marks. You know, he's such a strong mark. So many strong contested marks and intercept possessions and marks. Cal Wilkie is. Probably right now, um, the best key position defender in the competition. Um, he's freaking killing it. He's never missed a game since his debut three or so seasons ago. Um, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but you're around 80 odd now. He's freaking killing it, Cal, and it's great to see him do well. Um, on the wing, Caleb's a wrong 34 disposals for the Dockers in a tough night for them. Um, he did terrific. Um, James Harms for the Bulldogs kicked four goals, 27 disposals. Could argue with Norton, he was probably their best player. Ed Richards would mount in case as well in the midfield, played really well, 34 disposals at high efficiency, a lot of meet clearances. Um, service upon his team, Ed Richards. Uh, Christian Petrarca killed it, five goals, 20 odd disposals, probably the best player in the Carlton Melbourne game. I don't care that Melbourne lost, he was probably the best player. Aaron Norton kicked four at 20 odd disposals for a key four. That's just a lock. I don't care who you are, what team you played against, if your team won or lost. He's a lock. Cole Langford kicked four. He's having some good form this year. Cole Langford in and last year. Willie Rioli kicked four. Almost stuffed his team the game late in the game, but you're lucky. But he had a good game though. Besides that, Darcy Fogarty was the reason why Adelaide had the draw in the last quarter. He was terrific. Two goals late. Some strong contestant marks. And well deserved his spot on the team. Isaac Rankin kicked three and about twenty disposals was a lock. Rowan Marshall had the best game for a ruckman all year. Had twenty eight disposals. He had 12 clearances, 12 tackles. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to actually, you know, just, these stats just roll off the top of my head, but I'm just going to let you all know how good Rowan Marshall's game was when getting it up right from me, every little stat. 28 disposals, 11 tackles, 23 contested possessions, 5 intercept possessions, 12 clearances, 35 hitouts, uh, 8 inside 50s, 3 one percenters. Rowan Marshall had the best ruck game of recent memory. That was colossal from Row Marshall, the best ruckman in the competition too. I mean, you could argue some others, but that's who I think it is. Uh, Ollie Wines, back into some good form is Ollie Wines with the power. Stepped up with Rosie being out. True leader, Ollie Wines. Not the captain no more, but still killing it. One goal, 34 disposals, a lock. Adam Trelaw. You know, people could say there's other players that are their best midfielder, but there's none in better form than Adam Trelaw. People used to always knock his disposal, and he's really picked that up since joining the Bulldogs. And, you know, it's great to see Adam. Um, never met Adam. I'd love to meet Adam Trelaw one time. We'll even have him on the podcast. He's like a ripper guy. Um, you know, a guy like Tom Mitchell over time and Brad Crouch have been really good for their kicking, and all three of them have improved it, and it's great to see. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Bench, Josh Battle, two goals, 22 disposals, like 11 marks. We only played down back, pinched down, pinch hitted down the four long, needed to get some scores in the second half. Is uh, you know, a free agent this year, uh, Josh Battle, and we must immediately sign him to a four to five year deal. 
If you want 600, 700, pay the man his money, plain and simple. He deserves it. And some of that actually would have earned a four to five. You do, unlike some. Zach Butters, a goal, 34. It's not much to say. He freaking killed it. Kalar Cheek, four out forward. Again, like Darcy Fogarty, he and Darcy Fogarty were big reasons as to why the game did not go on the losing side for both sides, despite it being a draw, the second draw this year, along with Essen and Collingwood. Paddy Cripps, I was tossing up between him and Sam Walsh with his last spot. I went Paddy Cripps. One goal, 35 possessions, a better amount of clearances and efficiency there and clearances than uh, Sam Walsh, which is why Sam Walsh missed out. He was the next mid, though. And Will Haywood up forward, kick four. Big reason why the Swans smashed the Dockers and gave them a loss. Emergency Sam Darcy kicked four was stiff. Sam Walsh was just said it was the next mid. Horn Francis. I thought Horn Francis was really good. You know, some people say I hate him. I don't. I don't hate any player. Um, I thought he had a really good game. Um, the facts still show, though, that he ran away from North and treated him like garbage. Yet Zerha is a hypocrite and he's going to be doing the same. And what poor form is Cam Zerha? You know, I don't know why any club would want him right now. Uh, Nick Blakey was all right. Off half back, 26 disposals. Tom Green, 34. His efficiency let him down, which is why I didn't put him in. Uh, Bailey Dow was good off half back. For the Bulldogs, Dacos was good. His efficiency wasn't great, though, either, which kept him out. Jack Payne, um, you know, for some of them might argue and say something like, oh, Tom Green or Nick Dacos' efficiency was better than another midfielder, X, Y, Z. Well, I'll counter-argue with some other stats like clearances, etc. That's why they're in there. I love Tom Green. Tom Green's probably my favourite player outside of St Kilda. So, I mean, it's not biased leaving him out. I like Tom Green. I'd love to have him on the podcast as well. He seems to be a good chat as well. I have on the podcast. So, uh, yeah, Bailey Dale, 30 disposal was good. Dacos at 36 was good, just his efficiency. Jack Payne was an key defender. He had like 11 intercept disposals, but because Darcy Fogarty did well, I couldn't put him in. Uh, and Finlay McRae, I thought it was a wild card. Three disposals, uh, three goals, uh, three disposals, three goals, 17 disposals. Most of them in the second quarter, we kicked two of those goals and like 11 touches, which is why I didn't put him in. But he, had, he ended up with like 23 or something. He could have fell into the position of... Um, Making the team on the bench. I, uh, oh, I mean, actually, it would have been really hard. Maybe I could have figured a way not to put Zach Fisher in, maybe, and put, put, move the magnets around. Um, so, but yeah, so that's that's what I've got for my team of the week. So comment down below what your thoughts are on my team of the week. If you're going to justify your reasons, you've got to specify who for and not just say, oh, he shouldn't be in. you got to say who goes in and why, not just. Whatever. Make your own team before you can judge mine. Um, all right. Now let's go through my super coach talk. Loved my round this week. Really loved it. It's got 2,542. I was in the top 1% for the round, obviously, with a score like that. Um, finished with a round ranking of 489. So bloody pumped. I ended up doing a trade with Sicily out and Yo out. I was going to trade out Yo for Luke Ryan, which I did. And the other one was going to be um, Sam Darcy out for Colby McCurcher. You ordered us some you know, player swaps because they're not in the same position. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I couldn't do that. I was umming and ahhing um, whether I put McCurcher in still, but would it be for Sicily? Do I get rid of Toby Pink because he was dropped and put it in for like Riley Hardiman or Angus Hasty or something? I thought, no, nah, I don't really want to do that. But then McCurcher had to break him to minus 61. It's like, I've got to get him now and I don't want to regret it. If he's playing halfback, I want to put him in. But if he plays me, I don't know. Sheasel's getting impacted. I've got Sheasel. So it's like, do I want to put too many North players? Like, there were so many factors into this. I'm like, hey, I'll get rid of Toby Pink. I'm getting Riley Hardiman, who's a freaking North player anyway. And he was on the bench, so he could have been the sub. And then the teams. And I couldn't leave it to the last second because St. Kilda Hawthorne game was before the North ones. So it's like, I had to make up my mind. And I mulled it over Thursday and Friday night. And I come to the conclusion of bringing in Colby McCurcher for Sicily. Not only do I get that money, McCurcher's now made 60K. Could make another 50k or so for being real. So it could work out well in the long term with that cash because I wanted more cash. I got some with Will Graham and Closey and Darcy um, and Harvey Thomas and that, and potentially soon Alex Sexton, Hugo Garcia. But it's like I, I want to make that money now. I need it. I've got this money left over from Colby to Sicily, uh, from Sicily to McCurcher. So I could do it this week. Now I have done a downgrade as well because there is some downgrade options that are really tempting. But I saved that money the week prior to upgrade some. So I don't know if I really want to be, you know, doing triple downgrades, if you know what I mean, and then having to wait an additional week 
And it's still similar to what I did doing the downgrade from Primo to a Mupriser. So just imagine that another premium in you know? Oh boy, oh boy, it could have been a fantastic. I could have got 2,600 realistically if I didn't have McCurchin and had a premium instead. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Really good week for me. Really pleased. Um, so I've done a rookie trade at the moment, not telling you who for, keeping it secret. And I did a premium upgrade as well with someone that's not named Sam Darcy now. So I had to, you know, rejuvenate that and go, oh, okay. Now, again, with Sam Darcy, you don't know if I've done it for a forward. I don't know if I've done it for a mid or a ruck. The loophole, uh, not the loophole, with the mid forwards, defender mids, forward rucks. You know, you don't know the combination. You've done defender mid, defender forward, defender ruck, ruck forward, ruck mid. Well, not ruck mid. There's no ruck mids, I don't think. But um, Hugh Greenwood could be named that at one point. Maybe so. I mean, if he was a player, you know, interesting. Let's just say that. But, um, yeah, it's um, very interesting. But that's what I've done. Let me know your thoughts on your, your super coach, how you're going. Uh, let's go through my quickly my super coach league. I shot up in the rankings there, which I'm really pleased with after a lean start in there. Um, I'm now a hundred and uh, where is it? 129th out of 223, which isn't great. Congratulations to Riley. Um, Sorry for a second, gents and ladies and gentlemen. Um, sorry, business. So yeah, so sorry about that, but um, yeah, so it's it's, it's just going to be interesting to see the super coach. So let's go through that. So. In first place, I got Riley, whose name is Paddy Back, Paddy Mac. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's that. Um, so Riley, which I believe may be. Riley Mac Riles Macca, who is a Sydney fan who does some YouTube content. I mean, I don't watch a lot of it, but I see some posts and he, his videos look really good. Um, because someone was reminding me last week there was Rolls Macca. So Rolls Macca did really well. He actually got three points more than me. He got two five four five. Naughty. But uh he's in first place. Well done to Rolls Macca. Uh Rowan the Saints, Declan is in second place. Andrew M3 is on in third. In fourth place is Vessel, which is Alan, who was first last week. And in fifth place is Studi. Studi. And, yeah, so that's the top five. So interesting in there. Um, I know for a regular listener in Graz, he is now 11th. I mean, Graz, you got to bump back up, mate. you got to get back up, mate. It's all right. So, yeah. All right. So... Let's now go through reviewing the round nine games. Shall we? All righty. All right. Okay. So let's go through the games. So round nine, we had Carlton and Melbourne. Carlton 76, Melbourne 70. So Carlton 77, Melbourne 66. Uh, oh, God. Take 1,000. Carlton 77, Melbourne 76. You know, Petrarca was awesome. He's the only reason they were in this game. Five goals, 23-odd disposals elite. Uh, Max Gorn was all right, but, you know, May and Lever weren't at their best. Um, well, they're was, was still okay, but, like, in this game, they weren't crash shot. Um, you know, Melbourne, what do they do with that four line? Fritch is a gun, and Pickett's inconsistent, but what else is there? What do they do with the tools? I know I've been debating with a lot of Demons fans there. They want to bring in Tom Fullerton, and I just don't know if he's the answer. Josh Shackey ain't the answer. Uh, ben Brown's not the answer, but he's the one I would bring in. Now, Jacob Van Royen's out this week in concussion. I would bring Ben Brown in. I would bring in young key forward Matt Jefferson, but he hasn't really done much in the twos. His second year, top draft pick last year, or for the year prior. Um, I like Matt Jefferson. I think he'd be a good player. Um, they might give him a go. Maybe they've had enough of Ben Brown and Josh Shackey and Tom Fullerton, even though Fullerton hasn't had a game yet, Melbourne. Maybe this is the game you play... Who did Melbourne play this week? 
Melbourne have, which we'll get to in the tipping side of things later, but Melbourne have, I think they've got a, a team that they should win. Yeah, they're, okay, they got West Coast. So what a prime opportunity this could be for a debut for Matt Jefferson or to build the confidence of, of, of um, Tom Fullerton in saying that I think they'll go with Ben Brown. I don't think they'll shock us with the, one of the other three. Shaky's coming back from a little injury, Achilles or something. So, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd personally go Matt Jefferson, given the exposure against an interesting Eagles team. Uh, I don't know if McGovern's going to play because he was ruled out late in the Eagles game. I don't know what happened to him, but he might not play. So if that doesn't happen, it's just got Barras, and Barras will go to someone else. Then Matt Jefferson, you know, could you build him some confidence that he can belong at a level. What do you think, Demons fans? Duxy, if you're listening, g'day, Duxy, a big fan of mine, and I appreciate Duxy very much, mate. Um, you know, help out a few things and stuff. You know, we don't see him in the chat too often, but thank you, Duxy, for the help you do, mate. Really do appreciate it when you do help out. Appreciate you, mate, very much. And, and I'm sure he'd love this. And you know what? Someone that I can appreciate a lot that does YouTube videos, you know, his name on YouTube is Sean Ducks, S-H-A-U-N, Ducks, D-U-X. And he does also do Monash Demons with a few of his crew down at the Monash Demons. They do a lot of videos, you know, and especially Sean Ducks on his YouTube channel. He does Melbourne Fan TV with Jordan McCleary. They do a terrific job there. Two good people as well. So is Geordie. Um, but, yeah, go check out their channel as well. I would, You know, I don't really do shout-outs. Some people don't deserve it, but these guys do. So D Sean Ducks on his own YouTube channel, it's just S-H-U-N. In fact, you know what? Instead of spelling it out, let me let me put that on the screen here. So I'm gonna, we're going to write all the names up, and you just search their names up on YouTube. Um, uh, so they are on Instagram, Duxy and Geordie for Melbourne Fan TV. But... You know, you want to see full videos. Um, there you go. So there's the screen name there, Sean Ducks. So pause it if you want because I'm about to take that banner off. So Sean Ducks, Monash Demons, and Melbourne Fan TV. They do a terrific job, you know. And there's not many YouTube videos that I'll watch a lot of all like, consistently, but I love watching Geordie's and Ducksy's Fan TV one in particular. They do a good job. And Ducksy does put a lot of effort in, with, like Geordie, for the content they do. So please go support those three channels for Sean Ducks, Duxy, and um, Geordie McCleary. They do a terrific job. All right, so and I'm sure they'll appreciate that shout-out. Um, but, yeah, so let's go back to review in round nine. Melbourne, unfortunately, they didn't get it done. They were robbed at the end because there should have been an advantage. Fritch or whoever it was in the goal square, Windsor, whoever, doesn't matter who the Melbourne player was, the goal was kicked from the advantage that wasn't given. It wasn't even given a free to Melbourne. It was given to Carlton, which is bullshit to Brody Kemp when that was his own fault. But all... All around, the game was good, but, you know, unfortunately for Melbourne, Carlton got the chocolates there. Now, the next game to go through is Geelong and Port Adelaide. Geelong, 95, Port Adelaide, 101. Up the power. The power did it. You know, I was talking to some Port fans throughout the week, and, you know, they weren't confident at all, and fair enough. They had some injuries, but let's face it, only kind of Rosie was the big out. The other guys are pretty average. They missed a few of the sample hacks. Um but, you know, it is what it is there. But I thought there were a chance, you know, they had nothing to lose. And the poor friend's like, yeah, no, that's true, but I still don't think so. I said, no, I think it. As long as you can divide, defy the match fixing that Geelong get a lot of the time of their ground, I think you can do it. And I don't know who was more proud. The people they go for Port that I was talking to about this or myself, um, because I tip Port as well. People say it's biased. No, because I hate Geelong. I, yeah, I don't like Geelong, but that's not why. I tip Port Adelaide. I felt like they had nothing to lose, you know. Backs against the wall. Geelong had more pressure on them somehow because they see Rosie's out and, you know, Dixon's playing but not really crash shot after he bit sore throughout the week during training. So, and he's always saw Dixon. So it's like, and Dixon never getting something off the last quarter. So halfway through. So they didn't have Dixon in that key moment at the end when Geelong were coming back. And put out the gate, eight goals to three in the first quarter was awesome to see. Uh, Barter's terrific horn. Francis was good. Yes, yeah, see that Port fan that knows. See, Jason Horn Francis, Port fan, he had a really good game. Clip that if you want. Jason Horn Francis against Geelong in round nine of 2024 had a good game. And I believe the round before, round eight of 2024, he was in my team of the week. 
support fans. So just remember that, okay? It's the most positive you're probably ever going to get about Horn Francis. So there you go. Credit where credit's true for Jason Horn Francis. Still doesn't love his ice bath, so, you know. And he's still left after one year and ditched north. And Serha is still a hypocrite when he's going to do the same this year. Um, but, yeah, Port, terrific. You know, backs against the wall. Kane Farrell is a terrific kick. So is Dan Houston. You know, a lot of clubs would love a Kane Farrell and a Dan Houston off halfback or off the wing, or just in general as a player. They're all terrific. Kicking aside, they're, that's their main weapon, but they're both bloody good. Farrell can run. Houston can run, and he's a strong marker as well, Dan Houston. He kicks a lovely goal, especially after the siren against Essendon. Essendon fans, you still heard over that one, eh? Dan Houston. Houston, we don't have a problem. You have a problem, Essendon, after that. Now, uh, yeah, get the band to Bombers fans. You're doing all right this year. But, hey, you still haven't won a final in over 7,000 days. Just remember that. Now, that game, yeah, Geelong, you know, Tom Stewart, credit to being tagged um, in this game, Tom Stewart, and Port nullified his impact. He did nothing, Tom Stewart. He's doing nothing all year for his standards. Yeah, I mean, he's had a good moment, sure, but he hasn't been great. Zach Guthrie was okay, I guess. Um, Myers was off a little bit, but anyway, here we are. Now, in tough scenes for Fremantle and Sydney, um, Fremantle, 4, 15, 39, Sydney, 39, 87. You know, Fremantle kicked straight. They could have got a lot closer, but I still think Sydney were for the far superior side. Will Haywood, terrific. Rampy, um, Warner, Blakey, Rowbottom, Lauren, uh, Logan McDonald in moments uh, were good. Fremantle and Caleb Sarron were good. Um, but, yeah, it was a... Tough day for Fremantle um, and for Gita Brist on Saturday with the passing of Cam McCarthy. Obviously, he played for both clubs. Um, and, yeah, he unfortunately passed away on Thursday night um, and when we all found out Friday. So condolences to his family. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're sorry to hear that. Um, so, yeah, it's sad to see. Um, but yeah, so you can forgive some of the people at Freo that are known Cam and at GWS um, to know not want to play. Justin Lomuir outlined in the game, you know, and what was really sad to see as well was. You know, in the pre-game stuff they did, you know, when they panned the camera on the players, in particular Alex Pierce and that Fife. Obviously, Fife was the skipper back then. Alex Pierce played alongside Cam, would have matched up against him in training so many times. Um, being a defender in Alex Pierce and Cam was up forward. Um, and, and for the Giants too. Obviously, Josh Kelly put a post out as well. Um, it's one I can remember off the top of my head, but, you know, a lot more would have as well. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's horrible. Um, but yeah, and you know, the flowers with Cam, uh, for Cam from Alex Pierce and that five was, um, a great moment for them to, to honor it. Was hard watch. It was a hard watch. And, you know, for the Giants as well, you know, we can't forget the Giants. Cam started his career at the Giants as before Freo. Um, and I'm sure. You know, if Cam obviously would have known a lot of the players that are still there, like especially the veteran guys like, you know, Cal Ward, Josh Kelly, Stephen Cornelio, Jesse Hogan, um, you know, so, yeah, it's 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 shocking to see and uh, it will be missed. Now, we go to the next game, which was Hawthorne and St Kilda. Hawthorne and Secure to now is next. Do I have to talk about this? Do I have to talk about the Saints game? I don't want to talk about it, but we're going to talk about it, okay? So, we lost. We lost. Let me get the scores back up. 8, 10, 58 Hawthorne and St. Kilda. 7, 11, 53. Five point loss. Now, I'm not bringing up the Max King thing again. Uh, he had a great game, silence the haters. 
that should have been a Freedom Max King to give us an opportunity to win. But outside of that, I literally was getting ready. In my head, I was trying to think of the post. If we won, nothing's going to be mentioned about umpires until the Max King is in the last freaking 30 seconds. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, we'll, we were outplayed and all that. But we still were. But And Hawthorne probably deserved the win, but we robbed of an opportunity at the end. Roe Marshall was terrific. I went through the stats earlier. 28 disposals, 12 tackles, 12 clearances, 32 uh, 23 contested possessions. The best game of a Ruckman this year and almost ever. That was colossal. Rowan Marshall is the best Ruckman in the competition, and this game solidifies that as Rowan Marshall should be and will be the 2024 All-Australian Ruckman pending injury and everything like that. Right now you're picking it. Rowan Marshall is your guy, and he's my guy, my Ruckman, right now in the rolling All-Australian team, which I'll probably end up doing maybe in three to five weeks' time, maybe. Just an update because we're in around nine. So maybe in the buy rounds I might do my rolling All-Australian team once and then do not do another one until the end of the year. And I'll reveal it during the buy week and finals when I'll do the Scripps medal as well, which is coming back then. So if you keep wondering where my brown line votes are, it'll be then. I've been doing my votes and tallying them up. Uh, I'm not saying a damn word. Because I want to give any of you any indication of who's getting votes. Because it may surprise you, may not surprise you, it will surprise you. Uh, let's just say it's it's not going to be how you think it's going to turn out. If you think I'm going to be biased, let's put it that way. And I'm never biased with votes at all. Now, this game, Cal Wilkie was awesome. Josh Battle, I mentioned them earlier. Riley Bonner praised them all before. They did terrific. Uh, for Hawthorne, Carl Amon, I praised him earlier. John, you can make a good game too, which I didn't have in the team of the week. Um, but he was a team of the week worthy just. He was, I mean, in the conversation for the emergency list, but not for the main team, but still fantastic. Um, but, yeah, we just couldn't get it done, and it really frustrating. We had key opportunities to miss goals in the third quarter or so to get closer. Just couldn't capitalise. You know, I said this to some people on in other chats and stuff, like, you can't keep blaming Max King. I hate... The Max King bullying. I hate it, okay? It is not his fault that he gets triple teamed. It's not his fault. The delivery to the four line most of the time is rubbish. It's bombs, it's hat kicks, it's dribble kicks. Like, it's just floaters. Like, no forward is going to do well when that happens. No one. Charlie Curdo would be in the same boat if he got the service that Max King gets. Is that the midfield? It could be. Is it the half back? It is. Could be that too. Um, you know, it's just like, seriously, the delivery is going to be better. And, you know, people keep saying, oh, you got no injuries. Yes, we do. Hunter Clark's just come back from an injury. Brett Crouch is still injured. Dan Butler's out injured. You know, Webster's has just come back from suspension. Patton's just come back from injury. Um, Howard was injured for a little bit until about three weeks ago. These guys are just going to heal. I'm uh, not heal. Henry and Wood. So it's just like all these injuries throughout the year. There's been there non-stop. You know, Roland Marshall and Steele are playing injured right now. Don't know if you noticed that, but Roland Marshall looks injured. I can tell when both those two guys are injured. They 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 do anything for the team, and that's why they're playing. If they would have the week off, if if Ross didn't want them to play, they would still want to play. They will battle it out because they're true leaders of the club. That's why Steele's the captain, and that's why Royal Marshall's in that conversation as well, and that's why he's highly regarded. But, you know, Steele, he had, Jack Steele had a good game too. But pathetic overall performance, not happy. It's the fifth game that we've lost by under 10 points or less. The fourth, four of those five have been six points or less. So we haven't got the close games, um, which is disappointing. So you, you reverse a few of those wins. It looks a lot better, and the talk's not going like this. Oh, I'm going to add an extra script to Spain. Kane Corns saying that Ross Lyon's full of excuses. It's the break, five-day breaks. It's the umpiring, and it's interstate trips, yada, yada, yada. He's not wrong, Kane. Who the hell else has got freaking that much like that? No one. He's factually correct. And he wasn't necessarily blaming the umpires for that port game. I was because it was ridiculous and warranted. Ross didn't blame the umpires. Watch the whole clip. You've shown the clip. He didn't 
blame the opposition. They were interesting. Yeah, you might interpret that he's saying that, but he didn't say it. So you can't say that he said that when he didn't say it. Um, yeah, that's just Kane doing what Kane does. Um, but look, bad loss. We move on to Freo this week at Marvel. Hopefully, get the chocolates there. Uh, We'll go a bit quicker throughout these games. Essendon, 82. GWS, 62. Essendon by 20 points, you know. GWS and Frio, tough week for them, as I said. From the game, um, they got the job done, you know. So, good on them. They had a good win. Kyle Langford kicked four, as I mentioned. Um, Sam Draper did nothing wrong about Luke Beveridge. And we move on. All right, GWS, Tom Green was good. Josh Kelly was good. You know, their back line, Harry Himmelberg did his job. But unfortunately, they didn't get the chocolate star. Lucky Whitfield was well held. I think it was Sam Durham, I think. Did a good job as well. Forgive me if it wasn't Sam Durham. Whoever played on Whitfield did a good job. I think it was Dar Sam Durham, though. So credit to Sam Durham. Um, all right, the next game we're going to go through is Richmond and the Bulldogs. Actually, no, it's Gold Coast North, 120 to 52. Gold Coast by 68 points. Jed Walter was terrific at two, four. Could kick to five or six. Ben King was great, kicked three and had 11 disposals. Uh, Anderson and Miller, Sam Closey. He's having a great year, breakout year, Sam Closey. Um, out of nowhere, Sam Closey's performance. He's played at Werribee. He's really good at Werribee. Um, we've seen all the guys at Werribee get recruited, Sean Manor, um, and some others that are playing at Werribee right now that could get picked up as well this year. Um, so keep an eye out for some Werribee plays potentially in the mid-season draft, which is in a few weeks' time as well. Which I'll be covering all that and talk about all the news and hearings of all that who will have spot opens Brisbane have four apparently they might use three John Ralph saying so yeah we'll have to wait and see there uh but north are rubbish plain simple absolutely garbage that was embarrassing but I'm not surprised Richmond and Bulldogs speaking of crap and embarrassing Richmond 42 Western Bulldogs 133 Bulldogs were 91 points look credit to the Bulldogs for bouncing back but it's Richmond um Norton, Tariq, four goals mentioned earlier. I'm going to repeat myself, so just saying the names. Norton, Dale, Richards, uh, James Harms were terrific, Ed Richards were terrific for the Bulldogs. Richmond, rubbish. All of them, rubbish. The one positive, I suppose, is Prestia didn't get injured in his first game back like he's done in some others. But unfortunately, that players get injured again throughout the game. Ross Rioli is going to miss an ankle injury for around eight weeks, apparently, I think Sean Ralph said. Sam Banks, unfortunately, got concussion and bad one, so we wish him all the best. He's all good, though. He sat on the bench, and there was another injury of someone else, which I've forgotten off the top of my head, so apologies, and that play will miss some time as well. And apparently, Seth Campbell may um, be in doubt, which I hope not, for fantasy reasons. Uh, yeah. No one Richard really played well, and no one really deserves to get mentioned. Collingwood and West Coast, speaking of teams that don't deserve to get mentioned, it's West Coast, 37-103, highest by 66. Witherden was good, and the rest really weren't that good. Collingwood, Nick Dacos was good. Finlay McRae was good. Joe Richardson, his debut was terrific. That's all I'll say. Lockie Sullivan was really good. That's all I'll say. You know, you know. And then, yeah, the highs, Jack Crisp was really good. Um, Jack Vitale, the ex -Sane came on as a sub in the first quarter after an injury. Jeremy Howe, he's had a groin injury, he missed a week or two. Um, Jack Vitale, unfortunately, a concussion in the last quarter. Wish JB you all the best. Hope you're going well, mate. Um, yeah, I like Jack Bartel at the Saints. So I don't know why we got rid of him. Still not happy about that. Uh, from West Coast, the one thing I'm going to say about Harley Reid's mark is the carry on from the AFL website and fans is ridiculous. Harley Reid took a reasonable mark, a mark of the year content, mark of the year contender. Piss off, seriously, that is embarrassing. It's the the sucking up towards him is embarrassing. Really, I'm sure he doesn't want it, but who that is giving it? It, the you know the carry on it's embarrassing seriously stop it it wasn't a goal a mark of the year mark it was a freaking standard mark ollie henry took a better mark in the round no i heard no one sucking up to that one that was way better than that one whatever you want to call that he got off the ground sure but it was on frampton yeah but it wasn't that great give me a break the carry on's ridiculous you know seriously Whatever. All right, the next last game, it was the best game of the round was the draw. Not because it was a draw, it's just because it was really high scoring. It was the most, the margin was 18 points midway through the last quarter for Brisbane. It was Adelaide and Brisbane at Adelaide Oval. It was 90 apiece, 13, 12, 90 apiece. 
Darcy Fogarty was terrific late. So was Callum Archie. Jordan Dawson kicked the point for the uh, Crows. Um, you know, Joe Danaher had his moments. Um, you know, Lockie Neal had his moments. Um, Dunkley, uh, Matt Crouch was really good. This game was really hard to pick a clear out play. Oh, the ranking was good. I mean, I'm not giving my votes away, but you can kind of get a gist of who I thought was better by watching this episode, but I'm not going to tell you factually three, two, ones, because you've got to wait to the supermental votes. So, yeah, that, those names that I mentioned were terrific, and I'm sure there were some others as well. Dan Curtin was subbed off again, back-to-back -back games, first game and second game. Bit interesting there. Might get dropped this week. Josh Worrell will miss eight to 12 weeks with a forearm injury. So we wish Josh Worrell all the best. Jack Scrimshaw for the Hawks has been suspended too as well. Great game, though, this one. This was the game of the round. If the Melbourne Cullen one wasn't, this one certainly was. All right. Let's now wrap things up with previewing the round 10 games. And actually, before we do that, if you know any AFL, AFLW players or any up-and-coming draftees or any state league players and love some of the podcasts and a Golden Challenger or an interview, please send me a message so we can get something sorted. You know, if you know anyone and you go watch any of my recent interviews with Jamie Harkin, the Waffle W's best player in the competition. She's very modest, but she is the best. Um, hence why she got a training gig at West Coast not too long ago. Um, some of my Gold King challenges with Kara from the Sandy Dragons, with London Ashcroft from the West Bulls VFW side, with Alicia Pisano from the Melbourne AFW side, a top five pick. Same for Elaine Greek from the Bulldogs AFW side, top 10 traffic as well. So go and check those Gold King challenges and interviews out. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. There'll be more to come. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Um, but yeah, so let's go preview the round 10 games. Starts on Thursday night. In Darwin, Terrio Stadium, and Gold Coast playing back-to-back -back games there. 7.30 Vic time. It's Gold Coast hosting Geelong. Jeremy Cameron won't play. Tom Hawkins will be rested. Scott said after Friday night's presser, after the match. But now if Cameron and I wonder if they don't play him. If they don't play them both, they they shouldn't win. So I'm going to tip the Gold Coast Suns here by five points. The next game on Friday night, the SCG, 7.40 Vic time. It's Sydney hosting Carlton. I'm going to the Swans here by five points as well. Saturday, 1.45 at the MCG. It's Collingwood hosting Adelaide. Big time. I'm going to tip the... Ooh, I'm going to tip the... Ooh, I'm going to tip the Pies here by five points as well. Um, Saturday, 4.35 at Giant Stadium. It's not called that now, but that's what I'm calling it. Same stadium. GWS hosting the Bulldogs, 4.35. Big time. I'm going to tip the Giants by 20 points here. Saturday night at Marvel Stadium is my Saints hosting the Dockers. 7.30 big time. I'm going to tip in the Saints by 10 points. So back, back, back to form, hopefully. Uh, you know, Wood and Henry get some more games under their belt after being a long time out. Hopefully some changes are made. Will Paddy Dow come in for his first game for the club? Play the last two games in the VFL. Three games now. No two games. And a scratch match. It was an unofficial game. It wasn't a real one. So two real official VFL games he's had. Does Zach Jones come in, being the best best in both games? Does Kammer, Anthony Caminetti come in? Cooper Sharman come in? Does Mateus Filippo come back in at 20 in the weekend at 8? Tackles one on Mateus. Hope you're going well, mate. Hopefully back on the team this week, mate. Um, Ari Schoenmaker, will he make his debut? There's a lot of options now. And obviously, Jack Kings will play the week after against Melbourne back from his suspension. And Butler hopefully will be back that week, if not the week after that, against, I don't know who we play after Melbourne. I think it's Port, maybe, again. Or West Coast, it might be, actually. But yeah. We'll see what happens there. Or Brisbane, one of those teams. I think it's Port again. I, should, I don't know. It's one of those after Melbourne, after Freo, then it's Melbourne, and it's either West. I think no, it is West Coast. So he'll be back for that game. Uh, or Butler, uh, Butler should be. And Crouch could be the West Coast game as well the week after Melbourne. So we'll have to wait and see there. So we suddenly get some guys back under Clark. So the last two weeks in the VFL played half last week because he got injured just before half time. They came back, didn't come back on. Played this week, played a full game, did really well. Hunter Clark. Um, Lance Collard got robbed in the VFL game. The most robbed game of all time. In, I'm not even bothering. I'm not even going to talk about that. That was just absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so as I said, Saints by 10 points. Uh, Saturday night at the at the MCG. Saturday night at the Gabba, 7.30 Vic time. It's Brisbane hosting Richmond. I'm going Brisbane to win this by 55 points. Plus another five. We'll go 60 points. On Sunday at Marvel Stadium, we have Essendon hosting North Melbourne. One ten big time. I'll be tipping Essendon to win this game by 45 points. Also on Sunday, we have Port Adelaide hosting Hawthorne at Adelaide Oval. 3.20 big time. I think the Power will continue their winning ways and they'll beat the Hawks pretty comfortably by 35 points. And the final game of round 10, 
which is up at Optus Stadium in Perth. 6.20, 6.20 Victorian time. It's the Eagles hosting Melbourne. Melbourne should win by 45 points. Now, I'm going to wrap it up with this. If you want me on Cameo, at the cameo.com forward slash Cooper G, you want me to roast a friend, wish someone happy birthday, anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And if you know any AFL, AFLW players or any up-and-coming draftees or any State League players and you'll have some on the podcast and the Gold King Challenge on an interview, please send me a message and we'll try and get something sorted. AFL Info Live on Instagram, uh, Facebook, AFL Information, Trogue Rumors and Results on there on Facebook, which has over 55,000 followers on YouTube right here. We're approaching 3K, so please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Kick It The Scoops, episode 97 of Kick It The Scoops episodes alone. Big show planned for episode 100. Trying to get some people on for that episode as well. Some memory, uh, we go through memory lane, go through some segments. We'll work it all out, and I'll let you all know between episode 99 and before, obviously, episode 100 begins. Thank you all. The most important thing of all to remember is go the Saints. And, of course, acknowledge me, the one. Come on, Saints. Just get the freaking win to Freo and bounce back, hopefully, in the right direction. All aboard the Filippo train. Then, now, forever, together. <laughs>